Okay, an interesting Christmas experiment. Uh, a lot of guys looking into what they're calling delayed lens effect. Um, it is more delaying the back magnetic field or the back electromotive force from the coil that acts against the magnet that induced it in the first place. That is what they're trying to delay. Um, and there's also these flux gate generators getting built and played around with at the moment. What we have here is just a simple flywheel that is sitting on top or glued to a 24 volt fan motor. Now that is not a very strong motor and there's a reason for that. And that reason is so I can detect any change in load whatsoever on that prime mover or motor. We have a very large smoothing cap that goes through a 7 ohm resistor so I can put my scope across that resistor and check to make sure that my amp meter isn't playing funny buggers. So our power supply is 26 volts and we have 164.6 milliamps. So we go from our power supply through that meter through the resistor into the cap and the motor is being fed from that cap. Okay, our coil or coils are uh, simply wrapped around ferrite cores like this which I got out of a um, old TIG welder which is where that fan motor came from also alternating magnetic fields we are using ceramic magnets so not very strong this coil here has 20 more turns than this coil here this one is 130 this one is 150 Okay, so um, I have the scope hooked across both coils and both coils have a resistor across them. Our primary coil, which is this front one, has a set resistive load of 100 ohms. Our rear coil, which we're calling the secondary, which is on the yellow trace of the scope, is across a variable resistor which I have limited and that limit is 90 ohms and it goes down to 2 ohms so from 2 to 90 is the range on the resistive load on the secondary coil the primary coil of course is hooked up to the blue channel and we are triggering from that little coil there so as we can see which one of these two coils is moving out of phase and it turns out that it is this one however does not lag in phase, it actually advances in phase compared to this coil here. Okay, what is inducing the magnetic field into this? Is it this coil here or is it the rotor? Well, that's where it gets a little confusing and you'll see why a little later. The rotor is not inducing any very, very little uh, magnetic flux through that coil. And we can simply see that by disconnecting the primary coil with the 100 ohm load on it, leaving it open, and you will see that the secondary coil produces absolutely nothing. Alright, so um, at the moment I have that wound down to 2 ohms, so our secondary coil here has a 2 ohm load across it and their primary has the set 100 ohms um, and as you can see I'm using the external trigger which gets a little bit testy uh, when trying to stabilize the waveforms but at the moment they are stable so once again our yellow trace is our secondary coil or the one furthest away from the rotor the blue trace is the primary coil with the 100 ohm load on it and that will remain 100 ohms for this test. The first thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to disconnect the primary coil and we will have to disconnect the earth as well because it's a common ground between the secondary and the primary. Now the reason you see it sinking slowly is because I am using the average and the average is set at 64 samples 
so um, that is why everything happens so slow so now you can see that our yellow trace or our secondary is almost flat along with the primary so without the uh, primary coil having a load on it the secondary um, produces nothing at all which means that the secondary is mainly relying on the um, counter electromotive force to induce the um, magnetic flux through it which creates a current so nothing hardly at all coming from the rotor making it to that secondary coil which also brings about the fact that um, magnetic flux or the bulk of it will indeed follow the path of least resistance and isn't shared as once thought through the whole shebang very little as you've seen was making it to the back coil when this coil became open now the only problem we have with that is um, as you'll see shortly this coil here um, is lagging behind in phase to this one here when we reduce the load on it and we must plug our earth back on to this one as well just so as we get everything happening correctly oh and I do have them phase correct they both go on the same way and the start of each coil is going to ground and the end of each coil is going to the probe so they are phase or polarity correct Right, so we have our nice little waveform back again so what I'm going to do now is I'm simply just going to wind this all the way back around so it's now that the back coil has a 90 ohm load across it instead of a 2 ohm load and you can see what is happening here like I said the waveforms aren't so pretty when we use an external trigger but there you can see the general idea now we know that the primary coil which is the blue one is what um, is inducing the magnetic flux into the secondary creating current however the secondary coil for some reason as you can see from our zero volt line is starting to create current before the primary coil and it is the primary coil that causes the secondary coil to um, or it's a primary coil that induces a magnetic flux into the secondary coil that creates a current so I'm not sure why the secondary coil starts creating uh, current before the primary when it needs the uh, primary to be producing the um, counter electromotive force to uh, get the current flow happening in the secondary so there you go um, that's a pretty clear shot to um, a delayed magnetic field between the primary and the secondary however it's the secondary that's getting it first and not the primary even though it is the primary that is needed to be loaded to create the magnetic field in the secondary so I really don't know what's going on there I just don't know how the secondary starts creating current before the primary very interesting stuff Like I said, if we disconnect the primary, everything disappears. And that will eventually flatten right out. So, um, yeah, it was quite some fun. So from this we've learned that magnetic flux will, or the you know, 99% of it, We'll follow the path of least resistance and bugger all makes it back here. Um, then when we load the primary, the counter electromotive force is going through the secondary. However, the secondary is creating current before the primary. And um, we're leading in phase in case of AC. So um, 
interesting stuff. Who'd like to answer that one? Okay, uh, thanks for watching. I guess there's not much more I can say about that, but um, very odd indeed. Cheers, guys. There was well, one thing I forgot to mention. Um, at the moment, we have our 90 ohm load on the secondary. We are drawing 164, 164.1, that's flicking backwards and forwards, so that's 0.1 of a milliamp. Um, even when we turn the pot right down and place a 2 ohm load on it, we see no difference. And as you can see right there, we're pretty much in the base. So the secondary coil shows absolutely no reflection against the rotor. Um, the same as the rotor induces bug roll uh, magnetic field into the secondary when the primary is open. So there you go. Absolutely no load reflected back from the secondary to the rotor as the argument becomes between the secondary and the primary. So, um, just thought I'd chuck that in there. So, there you go. The secondary showing no load. And our prime mover at all. Extremely stable. Regardless of what the load is. And you can see the phase shifting now that I've decreased the load. External trigger really takes some time to sort shit out, but um, there you have it. You're definitely seeing a current build up from the zero volt line before the primary. So that is the secondary, the yellow trace creating current before the primary is creating current, and yet it is the primary. magnetic field from uh, the back EMF that is creating the current in the secondary and the secondary is in fact producing current before the primary okay so that's it from me um, for this little demo I'll keep mucking around with this a little bit so we're showing a couple of things there quite clearly I would think um, so really not much more I can tell you at this moment other than uh, it's been an interesting little experiment so far. Thanks guys.